Many times you want to create a looping list of images or videos to play before or after your service to let people know about upcoming events or announcements. So let's look at how you can easily create these and even schedule them to play at a particular time each week. So first let's create a document. We'll call this loop and we'll set our category to presentation and we'll hit new. Now we can just um, find some images inside a finder window and we'll just drag these right inside the program and then we can start adding our timers to this. So we want these slides to automatically go to the next uh, slide. So the way we do this is by right clicking and we can add a go to next timer. But there's an easier way to do this. First I'm going to delete this slide because we don't need it. And then I'm going to add timers to all of these quickly and easily through this drop down of our clock icon here. I'm just going to set it to three seconds. And now you can see we've added timers to every single slide and our last slide has a loop to beginning cue to it so it automatically loop to the beginning. So if I click on this slide here, three seconds later it's going to go to our next slide. Then once it hits this slide, since it's got the loop to beginning, it's going to go right back to the top so that this will loop indefinitely for us, which is exactly what we want. Now the other thing we might want to do is change the transition that these slides use to something different than our default dissolve. So I'm going to go over here to my transition icon for this document and we can change the transition here. So we can maybe go with a 3D transition like a cube effect or maybe our swap effect here. Um, but I actually really prefer and like these uh, push transitions here so we could try this push transition which looks really nice and we'll hit done. Now not only can we have different images and slide elements inside a loop and have timer cues, but you can also have videos with timer cues. So again, we're gonna just pull this over and we'll find some videos in here. So I have a mini movie here that will drop in and uh, let's look at how this works. So when we add our timer cue to this, so we'll right click, add go to next timer. You'll see we have a few different options like setting that loop to beginning cue if we wanted to manually set it. Normally this is how long the slide will be on the screen but for video it will be how long does the end of the video stay on the screen. So we don't want our video to stay on there for five seconds. We want it to be there for zero seconds and I can hit done. Now when I go to play back this video, you'll see it starts playing back and I can skip to the end here and as soon as it hits the end, it's automatically gonna go to the next cue. The same if I click on this cue three seconds later, it's gonna slide over and this video is going to begin playing. Now videos are really engaging, but they take a long time to create. So how about we create some more engaging slide content without having to create an actual video. And we'll do this by creating some animated slide elements. So I'm just gonna create a new slide. We'll put this in the rest of our loop here. I wanna put it before my, my uh, loop back to the beginning queue. I'm gonna right click on it. I'm gonna add my go to timer queue going to set it to three seconds like the rest of our slides and now we can edit this slide. I'm going to delete this text box for right now and I'm going to create my first thing which is this white solid. I'm going to just change the size of this to 1280 by 720. This is going to be a background color for me and then I'm just going to put it at 0, .00 on the screen and then we can change the color to like a, a tealy blue color here and that works as our background. Now I'm going to add some images. My first image I'm going to find in this animated slide folder here. I have this uh, Instagram logo because we're going to make an Instagram promo slide and then I can size this down. Now I'm going to fast forward this process a little bit as I bring in three more Instagram images that I have. And then you'll notice that I'm going to make these look like Polaroids kind of strewn about the table. And so I'm going to change the angle. I'm going to add a pretty large stroke to it that's white. So it's got that Polaroid effect as well as a drop shadow to give it some more depth. Now that I've applied all of those different settings to the image, let's create some text. So I'm going to add a text box and then I'm going to type follow us on Instagram. Now we can resize this text. And so I'm going to go to my type settings here. We'll set this up to maybe 60 and we could change this font if we want. So I'm going to scroll up here and grab something a little bit uh, thicker and bolder. And now we can move this into position. So we'll grab our text here, uh, move this into position. We maybe could make it a little bit larger so we could maybe go up to like uh, 80. So that's looking pretty good. 
So now let's actually animate all of these slides coming on and we're going to do this through our slide build properties. So we're going to go to slide build properties. All we have to do is select an element and then we can select what transition we want that element to use. So we're going to say a push from the left for this one, a push from the right for this one. And then for the images, we're going to use a fly-in transition. Now you can use anything you want. I've just experimented and found these to be uh, good settings to use when we're uh, adding these different transitions in here. So I'm changing the duration as we go along to make these uh, transitions just a little bit longer. And you can change what angle it comes from. So you can change this to any of these different options. These are the ones that I prefer for this particular slide though. So now that we have this all set, we could go through and we could change how these come on and we can add delays. So if we wanted to, we could delay some of these. So maybe um, this last one, we're gonna delay just a little bit, like 0.5 seconds. We could add a delay here. Uh, 0.1 was a delay that I had before. Maybe we'll do 0.2. And then this one, we could add a small delay here of 0.3 seconds, which works great. So now let's check out our slide and you'll see all the items transition on the screen for us. So you can see how you can quickly and easily create more dynamic content by animating each item inside your announcement loop. Now the last thing we can do to finalize our loop is to put a countdown clock over top of it. So I'm gonna to go to View and then down to Messages and you'll see we have a couple pre-built messages. I'm gonna edit this and let's look at our countdown message. So it says our session will begin and then it's using this countdown one timer. Now I actually want to use a countdown two time timer so that this will actually count down to a specific time of day when our event begins. So I'm going to set this to let's say 1 p.m. is when our event begins. I can make sure my clock's ready to go and then I can choose a template. Now I've gone ahead and I've built a template here and it's just a some a red bar at the bottom of the screen with a place for the text and we're going to utilize this we can show the message so we can see what it looks like so it's just a real simple um, template here and we can hit clear all to remove that so now let's actually add this message automatically to uh, our loop here so that it plays back and we're going to create one more document to do this so we're going to do a new document I'm going to call this my start document and we'll hit new and then we're going to go up and we're going to go to view and cue palette and the cue palette allows us to add different cues to slides and so we're going to add our countdown clock to our slide which is a message and so in our messages we have our countdown we, it's set to our time here we'll hit uh, make sure it's set to the right hour so uh, 1 p.m hit done and so now it's added that cue to this slide so anytime i click on the slide it's going to start that uh, that timer there now I actually want this to automatically go to the next item, our loop and our playlist. So I'm gonna close out of our cue palette. I'm gonna right click, set a go to next timer and set this to zero seconds and hit done. So now we just need to add these to a playlist. So I'm gonna add my start, I'm gonna add my loop and then we're gonna go into contiguous view so we can uh, see all of our different items here. So we have our, our view here. So now as soon as I click on this, it's automatically gonna go to our next thing and start playing our loop. Now we can take this one step further by scheduling this. So all I'm gonna do is go to view and down to scheduler. We can actually schedule when we want that item to be started so we don't have to manually click on it and it can be started for us every single time. So I'm gonna hit the add icon. We need to select our playlist, which is Sunday. I'm gonna select my document in the playlist, which is gonna be my start. And then I can set what the day is, what time I want this to be done at. So maybe I wanna do this at 12, uh, you know, 1230 and we're gonna do it a half an hour ahead of time and we can set a, re a repeat if we want to and then I can close this out. It's added an icon here to our playlist letting us know that there's a scheduled item in this playlist and basically at 1230 it's gonna automatically go to that queue and start our loop.